Hey guys, welcome back. If you're like me and suffer from allergic sinusitis that causes post-nasal drip, irritates the lining of your throat, affects your voice, and causes you to clear your throat and cough all the time, or a person that's health conscious and wants to make sure the air they're breathing is good quality, then this air quality detector here is definitely for you. There are many of these sold online, some a lot more money, and some cheaper. This one is priced mid-range, affordable, and if you purchase a cheaper one, they don't have the built-in lithium polymer battery that you can charge using a USB cable. The sensitivity may not be as good as the one inside this unit, and you may not be able to calibrate a lot of the settings like you can with this one. If you look over here, you can see everything this unit is able to detect. The top one is PM 2.5, and what that's testing for is the level of particulate matter in the air that's less than 2.5 microns. To give you a few examples of particles up to 2.5 microns in size, it would detect smoke, combustion particles from engines that are running, candles that are burning, organic compounds, etc. And when testing for particulate matter in the air, the PM 2.5 setting is the most commonly used. Now under that, you're going to see HCHO. Some units may show CH2O, and what that's testing for is formaldehyde in the air. Formaldehyde is commonly found in building materials, furniture, cosmetics, clothing, household products, as well as preservatives. Exposure can cause irritation to your eyes, skin, nose, throat, and lungs. Long-term exposure to high levels of formaldehyde can also increase your chances of cancer. This air quality detector will let you know if the level of formaldehyde in the air is safe or hazardous. Underneath that, you can see TVOC. Now what that is, is total volatile organic compounds. Volatile organic compounds are gases or vapors coming from chemicals or toxins. Cleaning products, pesticides, cosmetics, perfume, paint, as well as cooking all give off VOCs. Of course, a VOC from a flower is generally not hazardous to your health, but other VOCs can be. If you smell an odor, you can be assured it's giving off VOCs. Levels below 0.5 or 0.6 milligrams per cubic meter are generally safe, and levels above that can cause headaches, irritation to the eyes, nose, throat, lungs, as well as coughing. Being subjected to very high levels over time can also cause damage to organs. Some VOCs can cause cancer as well as reproductive harm. Underneath that, you can see AQI, and that's Air Quality Indication or Air Quality Index. The next one over here is PM 1.0. Under that setting, the detector is looking for particulate matter that's smaller than one micron. The smaller the particle being detected, the more hazardous it is generally because it will find its way very deep into your lungs, unlike larger particles. Particulate matter in the 1 to 2.5 range is considered fine particles, and under 1 micron is where you will generally find most of your viruses, bacteria, metal fumes, smoke, and smog. The next one is PM10, and that's particulate matter up to 10 microns. That's the biggest out of all of them. The smaller particles, like the PM1.0 and the 2.5, they can stay suspended in the air for days or even weeks, but the larger particles like the PM10, they usually settle out over a few hours time. Some examples of particles that would fall into the PM10 category would be dust, pollen, and mold. PM10 particles are also considered coarse particles. The Environmental Protection Agency states that an exposure of 50 micrograms per cubic meter is allowable per day over the course of a year and 150 micrograms per cubic meter is allowable over a 24 hour period. The unit will also give you a readout for temperature as well as humidity. Now the only issue with this one, the temperature reading is going to be in degrees Celsius, not degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're looking for a device that's going to be in Fahrenheit, this one here is not going to be for you. But when people purchase these units, they're not looking to test temperature or humidity. They're looking for the particulate matter, the volatile organic compounds, and the formaldehyde. When looking at particles on the PM 2.5 setting, you can see it says excellent if you get a reading between 0 and 35, good between 35 and 75, slight pollution 75 to 115, moderate pollution 115 to 150, severe pollution 150 to 250, and serious pollution above 500. And the measurements are all in micrograms per cubic meter. Okay, let's open up the box and take a look at the unit. Everything you see here is included, the unit, the USB charging cable, and the instruction manual. Now I have to say the instruction manual was written pretty well. Most products that come from China have poorly written instruction manuals. This one was pretty good. Let me show you the entire unit. All right, here's the cable, the typical 
USB cable. And that plugs in right over there on the side. You can see the openings for the air to enter to be sampled. The unit fits very comfortably in your hand. It's not too big. Here's a look at all the sides of it. Okay, let me power it up and show you how it works. On the back of the unit, this piece folds out, locks in, and just like that. We're going to power it up by pushing the button. The large window at top is the PM 2.5 reading. Anything under 35 is considered good. Over here is the date and time. And you can see it's four micrograms per cubic meter. Over here it says PM 1.0 showing zero, PM 10 equals zero or one. And it's also micrograms per cubic meter. When you power up the unit for the first time, it takes around three minutes for the sensor to heat up before you start getting readings for formaldehyde and organic compounds. Keep in mind, when you purchase the unit, you have to calibrate it first. So what you're going to do, once this is fully warmed up, you're going to take this outside and place it in an area where there's no one painting, where there's no engines running from vehicles or small engines cutting the grass, etc. You want the air as clean as possible. After 15 minutes of leaving it there, you're going to push the power button twice quickly, and that's going to save the setting. The unit uses the outside as a reference to figure what the formaldehyde and organic compounds are on the inside. Okay, so we're at 0 0.076, which is pretty good. This is a little at the high end of the good range. More than likely, there's vapors given off by the surface that this is sitting on. I have a bunch of plastics surrounding this area. Plastics also give off vapors, but you can see 0 0.07 and 0 0.5. Now, if I push the set button, you can go into the settings over here for particulate matter. If somebody has a device that's even better than this one, you can actually match this unit up to the other device. So if the values for this aren't exactly like the other one, you can adjust it right here. You would just click set. Actually, you would just keep clicking set. And then I think you would push that one. Yep. And now you're on it. So you can move it around. And when you're done, you hit that one. Save selection. Yes and then just move down again. Then I can go into the formaldehyde setting. And as you can see, whoop, right here, the temperature I adjusted, it was off by a half of a degree. I used my house thermostat and another digital thermometer that I had, and it was off just a little bit, so I adjusted it. And over here, the humidity was also off a little, so I adjusted that. All right, so let me hit escape. Push that button once right here, the power button. And it gives you a readout for all the different settings. Four, it's green, and you can see down here, AQI is excellent. Escape. All right, so if you want to go to screen two, you push that once, and then escape. If you want to go to the other one to make the settings, push that one, and then you can choose each one and hit escape as well. In the event there's a problem with the unit not working properly, you can push with a pin right inside this opening where it says reset. If you notice that the readings are elevated for particulate matter, you may want to take a look at your AC system. A lot of the times you have dirt that accumulates as well as dust inside the ductwork. And what you can do is you can have a company come out and clean the ductwork. You can also use a high efficiency air filter, a MERV rating as high as possible. MERV rating stands for maximum efficiency reporting value. And if you use a cheap horsehair filter like you see here, or a blue filter like this one, it's only going to allow more dust and larger particles to go into your ductwork and circulate around the house. Do not use the less expensive filters. Always go for the better filter. You can also reduce the dust in your home by vacuuming more frequently, dusting more frequently, and removing carpeting and rugs from your home. Just to show you how sensitive this is, the other night I was about 15 feet away, putting lotion on my hands, and I heard the alarm start to go off. I'm going to take the Sharpie pen and just gently move it around the outside of the unit, and you're gonna see that reading go full scale. Here we go. Look at that. Blow on it. And it'll go right back down. You could be using this six, seven feet away and you'll see those readings start to go up. Super sensitive. And just to show you what the charging indication looks like, let's plug this in right over there. And there you go. It doesn't take too long, maybe a couple of hours.
Okay, let's open this up and take a look at the inside. A lithium polymer battery, pretty big battery. And you can see the charging board that's on top of it. Charging right from here, a couple of crystals. This is your HCHO or formaldehyde sensor. And this little piece here looks like the relative humidity sensor. Over here is your buzzer or alarm. In the event the readings get too elevated, you're going to hear the alarm come on along with the high readings lit up in red. Over here is the particle detection area. Inside this box is a laser and a sensor plate. Dust enters the unit as well as other particles and it gets between the laser aperture and the sensor plate and that's how the particles are detected. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.